Right, hello, welcome back to another video. Uh, today we're going to be talking about one of my favourite little tools in Maya, and that is transfer attributes. Um, so it can be found up here in Mesh. Um, I'm just going to open the options. There's loads of options and loads of different ways we can use this, so uh, I'm going to share a few today. Um, let's get started. Right, so let's say we have this nice high res um, mesh here. We want to create a nice smooth vertex colour gradient across this. Now we could go in and use the, uh, the painting tools where it is. Color. Go in here and paint this in, um, but we'd have to work out what gradients value should be in here. And, and I mean, this is quite a simple mesh, but if there was a bit more deformity to it, that'd be much harder. Um, but we can do it nice and easily with transfer attributes. So if we just create a copy, delete all of these extra edges, we do vertex color, automatically interpolates between values at the end of vertices. Um, so I can take my mesh here, which is now much more simplified. I just make it white and black. I've got a nice smooth gradient here. It's interpolating between the black and white values perfectly. Select my two disks. Get them right around. Here we've got disk one, disk two. So back. The way you have to select these, it's the this, the the mesh you have the data on. Then the mesh you want to target and send the data to. Run that now correctly. Just reset it because it's easy to get a few settings there left from last time. I want to do the vertex color. Well, that's what's termed the color set here. And I'm transferring that to local space. I click apply. It's a live link. So I might then delete my history. And, and now if I look at disk one, those vertex colors have been completely copied across. Nice and smooth gradient. Um, the other makes things nice and easy. Paint on a low res mesh, bake it down to a high res mesh. Great result. Cool. Uh, another very common use case for this, um, completely different. Let's say we have some underlying terrain um, and we want to take our, our mesh and sort of project it down onto it. So I use this for waterfalls, that kind of thing, all the time. Um, we can do that with transfer attributes. So um, got my mesh again, selecting the, the target with the data that we want to copy then selecting the mesh we want to apply it to second uh, if I reset I want vertex normals and position not the UV or color set and I'll put it in world position and in this case rather than closest to point I'm just along normal. the normals of my plane are all facing up what it's going to do project completely down um, it's missed a couple there that's fine like I said it's live if I just select my plane and move it across I'm going to update dynamically for us you always go in and delete those. Maybe I'll scale this down slightly. Projecting across my surface. Um, it usually needs a little bit of tweaking. Not going to be a perfect result every time, but it definitely gives you that, that basic form. Nice and easy um, for projecting things down. Like I say, water, stuff like that. Um, really powerful, really useful. Um, just remember to delete the history if you want to go back. Let's see a few. I just want to submit. Yeah, very useful. Right, um, next example. So looking here, we've got three different meshes. Now this one and this one, if I just open two. This one and this one have the same don't around. This one and this one have the same UV space, same UV layout, but they've got different mesh um, positions. But what I can do is I can use the UV data, it's obviously the same, where the meshes bits are. So again, set this. I want to transfer from this to this. I want to do mesh positions and normal. Do it in UV space. Hopefully, well, um, I can copy the positions of these verts to this one, and they're the same because the these are the same. Um, can be really useful. And had to do this kind of thing for for characters quite a lot. Um, something changes in the UVs, and you want to change the meshes and all that. So um, a nice little thing to be able to do. This one, similar kind of example. This time the mesh topology is the same. Uh, the geometry and, and edge flow and everything of this mesh is the same as this one, but someone's broken the UVs by mistake and then folded. So I can just copy that. And then this time I want again uh, UV sets. Yes, I want to do it in topology space. Now I've copied those UVs from this mesh to the same. Again, it has to be the same 
geometry. Um, but if you're dealing with kind of like facial animation and blend shapes, and then you accidentally break your UVs, you don't really want to have to uh, go back and sculpt those details again. Um, but what you can do is just transfer them as long as you're the same, um, which is pretty cool. Uh, last one. Uh, this is quite a common use face. Um, foliage planes. If this is bits of grass on the ground at the moment, I've got my vertex normal data turned on, you can see all the vertex normals are facing forwards, well what that means is it shades is in their individual planes. Now, fine, it doesn't look great, does it? Um, well, what we kind of want to do is make the whole thing, thing shade as one. So if we just create a sphere, up, um, what I'm able to do, select my sphere first and then meshes, again just reset, this time I just want to change the vertex normal space. See, it's taken all those vertex normal out. That's here. Shaded view. We're getting now, it's those grass planes are now shading as if they're they a sort of a spherical object. Really useful for things like bushes and trees, um, grass planes on the floor. Somewhere you want to control that shading to do what you want. It can sometimes a few errors, but um, definitely looks better than in planes. Similarly, select these bottom verts. Set them to have vertex normal. Set that to be Y up. It's the same as the ground underneath. Get a nice smooth blend between where the the ground plane is and the grass. Um, so there's a lot of stuff you can do with editing vertex normal. A bit painful to go and do it manually, but if you take one of source mesh and project it data from the source mesh to the the render mesh, um, you can get some things. Work nice, nice. So um, it's a really powerful tool. I use it for all sorts of stuff. Um, it's literally just one, one tool, one option. Um, but there's a lot of things that you can do from these and color sets and meshes and all sorts. So um, hopefully that's been useful. Um, I do recommend putting it into your workflow because, like I say, it's really useful. Uh, and I will see you next time with. Uh,